Thank you for tuning into our seller interview series. Up today, we've got an Amazon FBA business for sale on the home improvement niche. Created in January 2016, this business makes $3,086 per month in net profit, and the listing number for the business is 45657. We do these interviews to give potential buyers more information about both the seller and the businesses they're looking to purchase. We hope these insights are helpful for you in making a buying decision. We've got the seller with us today to go through the business and cover everything from niche selection to traffic and monetization. Dan, thank you for coming on here today. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic myself. I really appreciate you taking the time and I'm excited to discuss this business with you. But before we dive into the questions that I have, I want to go ahead and run through a little quick summary of the business. Again, it was built in January of 2016, has a monthly revenue of $16,343, expenses of $13,256 to make for a net profit of $3,086, which is generated on an eight-month average. Included in the sale of this business are the Seller Central account with 11 SKUs, trademark, domain and all site content and files, and SOPs. Please note the inventory is not normally included in the list price. Further details can be provided to active depositors. Dan, can you tell us a little bit about your background in building and running online businesses? Sure. I'm a background. I'm a mechanical engineer. So I did that four years after college, but I knew kind of always known that I've wanted to a run my own business and b basically be an inventor or design products. So uh, midway through my engineering career, I was basically looking for how I could pivot to a new profession, I guess. And I heard about the Amazon FBA business model and it seemed like a perfect fit for me because in terms of, you know, spreadsheets, logistics, emails, I was very comfortable with all that as an engineer. And then it also gave me the opportunity to get my feet wet with uh, product design, with uh, white labeling, because all my products are, they're not just off Alibaba, they all have like a unique design twist to it. So I guess three years ago, I launched the business. This is my first business. And then two years ago, I quit my job to go full time with the Amazon business. And here I am now. Yeah, and here you are now. And where you are is selling the business. So why have you decided to sell it today? Mostly cash to A, pay down some debts that I incurred in ordering inventory, and then also to basically launch new uh, new business. So I want to get more complicated in my designs because all my current products are you know relatively simple because that's the best way to get started with Amazon. But basically, I want to use the cash to spend a little more money on R&D and get a little more complex in my products to kind of just level up, I guess. And that absolutely makes sense. So you are running this business now and things are going pretty well. You notice that, you know, aside from a dip last February, I mean, you know, the business seems to be pretty consistent. So what happened last February? Yeah, so back in February, I launched a new product. And then again, I launched one in I think April. And uh, basically just two products back to back. And the strategy I take when launching new products is, you know, price it really low, spend a lot of money on PPC just to get the rankings and the reviews going. So, you know, on each sale I made for all those months for both those products, I was basically losing money. And then in June is when I, you know, increase the price to where it's at now to become profitable again. So I just saw it as an investment to get sales and reviews going. And yeah, I think ever since then, it's been pretty consistent monthly, I would say. Yeah. And keeping it pretty consistent, what do you have to do as the owner to maintain the business at at its current level? Basically, I do monitoring, you know, check that the listings are okay, review management, uh, and ordering new inventory. So like per week, depending on which products are up for a new order, one to five hours per week, I would say, I get maybe five emails from customers a week, basically just answer their questions and, you know, follow up for reviews. And depending on which product I need to order, all of them are pretty simple. One is a little more involved. So if it's the more, most of my products take just like three emails, you know, place the order and then an email with the pre-Amazon warehouse. But if it's the other one that takes a little more time, then I would say that that would take maybe five hours per week on that product. But for the other ones would be, you know, just like a three minute email session throughout the week kind of thing. And why did you decide to go with Amazon FBA rather than start with something like your own e-commerce platform? Basically just, you know, read all the success stories. And I really liked it because I am not a marketer. I don't really like marketing. I don't think I'm good at it. And with Amazon, they kind of take care of that for you as long as you do the right product selection because you know you know people are already looking for the product so all you have to do is get your keywords right get your images right and have a unique product offering as opposed to Shopify where you need a lot of money to spend on advertising and it takes a lot more time to get traction Amazon I see is kind of a, a shortcut so that is why you get boned by their fees quite a bit but 
I think it's a fair trade considering the only marketing I have to do is a little bit of PPC. And so all of your traffic then comes from Amazon Organic and Amazon PPC then? Yeah, I would say vast majority of it is, is organic. And there's just like a few keywords that I kind of have to keep running on PPC. But I have kind of structured the product placement in a way that it is it is mostly organic. I spend maybe about 400 a month on PPC. And other than that, even if I just pause PPC entirely, the sales would still be pretty good. I guess there's kind of like a debate out there where, you know, if you have a keyword that is breaking even, I guess, should you keep running it or should you just, or even at a loss a little bit, but I like to keep them running, even if I'm a little bit of a loss, because I think that Amazon kind of rewards you for maintaining a little bit of a PPC presence. And you have a trademark in the brand registry. You have a website. Can you take me through what the website's purpose is? Yeah, so I originally created the website to get brand registry. And basically now it's just to kind of give me a little bit of a presence off of Amazon. So I have the main domain locked down and I have all the products on there. But whenever someone clicks the buy, it just links them back to the Amazon listing. Like I originally tried setting up a Shopify and then I'm trying to find like a different fulfillment house and all these things. But I just, you know, 80-20 principle, I was just like, hey, I'm just going to focus on Amazon because that's what's working. And right now, basically, if someone just wants to Google my brand to see what I'm about, I'll have a website just to give me a little bit more credibility. If you were to keep the business, what are the things that you would focus on and what do you feel are the opportunities for growth here? I would first launch a new product that I have vetted and ready to go. And I was actually about to launch it, but then I decided I'd rather just try to put it up for sale instead. So that's ready to go and it fits in very well with the other products that I have and a little risk involved to launch that new one. So I would do that and then I would look into Amazon Europe. I think a few of my products would be a really good fit and there's nothing quite like them available there yet. But again, I just didn't bother figuring out the VAT and everything. So I didn't do that. I think that I could go more into PPC. I haven't tried, like I understand how it works, but I know that if you were to maybe outsource it to a professional, they could find a lot of way more keywords that would draw some traffic in that I just haven't really thought of. I've come up with like the obvious keywords and then a little more not so obvious, but I think that if someone really dove into it, I can get a lot more traffic just by spending a little bit of money on new keywords. Do you feel like there are any potential risks associated with this business that a new owner should be aware of? The fact that I'm only on Amazon in itself is a risk. There's a lot of, you know, I'm not alone in that. A lot of Amazon businesses carry that risk. Just being reliant on an external company is a little risky, but I've been doing this for three years and I've never really had any problems. I haven't had any account shutdowns or anything like that that really gave me too much of a scare. One of my products has magnetic properties and once in a while when I'm shipping it, With your freight forward, it might flag it as a dangerous good, but it's never actually caused any problems. They just wanted to put that in their filings, basically. So other than that, I can't really think of anything else that could be risky. What advice would you have for someone who came to you and said, hey, Dan, you've done really well on Amazon and I want to get started with it now. What's the biggest learning lesson that you've had here? I think that, well, I have gone a little bit of against what, you know, most of the courses and things are trying to tell you to do. Like what what I've done is I have found relatively high sales niches, but not the crazy high ones. But then I also never compete directly. I take keywords that sell very well, but then I add, then I come up with a big twist on the product. Very much differentiates me from all the other offerings. So I think that a new seller should avoid the very competitive niches because, you know, even if you see a guy doing a lot of sales, you don't know how much of that is giveaways. You don't know how much is the profits actually are. Whereas with my products, it's, I don't really have any direct competitors, but the sales also remain very consistent. So I would say just avoid the very competitive products and kind of do ones that, you know, shoot for five sales a day instead of 20 sales a day. And then you're, you're not going to have any vicious competitors like trying to screw you over on your listing and things like that. Would you commit to a non-compete? Yeah, for sure. No problem. And how much support are you willing to offer a new owner during the transition period? Basically, whatever they need, you know, for sure, like the month Skype support. I think it'd be good if I walked them through ordering each type of product because my inventory turns are about like six months. I usually don't have to order each product for another, you know, three to six months. So depending, I would like to walk them through each type of product. So even if that's three months from now, if they had never ordered it on their own, then I have no problem walking them through that. Are you open to negotiating on something like an earnout? Yeah, for sure. I mean, ideally, obviously, I'd like to get cash soon to like launch a new business. But 
that'd be totally fine too. I'd open discuss that. Awesome. Dan, thank you very much. My final question for you for today. If you were looking at this business as a potential buyer, what about it would make you feel like it is an asset worth buying? I think because the sales are very consistent, but also not too competitive, I get like it's pretty much not seasonal. One of my products is kind of seasonal, but vast majority of it is very consistent month to month. I don't have any hardcore competitors popping in. The sales keep coming in. I'm very differentiated in the marketplace. And I do think those opportunities are real of expanding into Europe, of spending more on PPC and of launching that one new product that I have vetted. And there would definitely be other products that I think that uh, could come up with as well. Well, yeah, one more thing I should say is mm-hmm. basically the valuation that I have right now, I've pretty much been out of inventory on at least one product constantly, just cash flow issues. So if someone could like, you know, maintain inventory for all products at once, then they would be making a lot more money than I'm valued at right now. So I think that's a good opportunity. Dan, thank you very much for taking the time to be on here with me today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to our channel. And if you want more information, the link will be below the video that will take you to this marketplace listing. If you're watching this on the listing page and want more information, become a depositor today. When you make the deposit, one of our business advisors will be in contact with you and you'll be given everything you need to review this business. Have a great day.